Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation with three variables. Not only is this quartic, but it also has a lot of variables in it. So can we solve this problem? Let's take a look. We're going to talk about the solution and we're also going to generalize this problem. And I'll refer you to some other video. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side first. So we have x to the fourth. Before we do that, actually, I kind of put this into Wolfram Alpha and got that solution that kind of looks like this. It continues, but that's a really long, you know, solution. I believe Wolfram Alpha is trying to apply the quartic formula to this expression because you can basically treat this as a quartic in Z and while the others are considered constants and just solve it. Make sense? Okay. Anyways. So let's see how we can approach this problem. I'm going to put everything on the same side. So it's going to become x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth minus 4xy z plus 1 equals 0. All right. And my next step would be to complete the squares. I'll start with this. How do you complete the square? I can go ahead and write it as x to the fourth plus y to the fourth minus 2x squared y squared. And obviously, in this case, we started off with a minus. We could also use a plus sign, but I want to separate a minus. You'll see in a little bit why that's helpful. So let's go ahead and add 2x squared y squared so we're balanced. And then this will be followed by up by z to the fourth. And then I will bring the negative 4xyz. And then I'm going to add the one. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I do have a perfect square here, which is good. I do have this term, this term, and I want to add something else so that this becomes another perfect square. So if you think about it, take out the two, you'll get x squared y squared minus 2xyz. What do you think we should add to complete the square? And the answer is would be z squared. And the reason for that is because this becomes x mi x y minus z quantity squared. Of course, with the 2 in the front, which means we have to add 2z squared. And of course, subtract it. Makes sense? So we're going to follow up with 2z squared minus 2z squared. We just add and subtract. But now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use these three things to make another perfect square. And guess what? Everything else will also make a perfect square. And isn't that perfect? OK, great. Now let's see what happens. This one is x squared minus y squared quantity squared. And then the next three expressions is going to be 2 times x, y minus z squared. Remember, we just talked about it, right? And then the rest is just going to be z to the fourth minus 2z squared plus 1. And isn't that z squared minus 1 quantity squared? and everything else is zero. So that's equal to zero, which is nice because now we can talk about, and of course, x, y, z are real numbers. Did I not say that? x, y, z are real. Otherwise, we're in big trouble. So if the sum of squares is zero and all these quantities are real, then we only have one option, which is every term needs to be zero. This needs to be zero, this needs to be zero, and this needs to be zero. Because you can't get zero by adding a positive number and a negative number. Yes, you can, but in this case, we can't have a negative number because none of these squares will be negative. Make sense? Okay. So from here, we get the following. z squared equals 1, which implies z is 1 or negative 1. But also, we get as z is equal to xy. So xy can be 1 or negative 1. And of course, x squared equals y squared implies x equals plus minus y. And that's what we actually get from here. So this gives you the following. Z is going to be plus minus 1. And x, y, z values are going to look like this. 1, 1, 1. They can be negative 1, 1, negative 1. And 1, negative 1, negative 1. Notice that z is always x times y. And those are going to be all the real integer solutions. Now the weird solution from, from alpha, don't worry about it too much because these are going to be the only real solutions. So from a quartic equation, we got something interesting, right? 
it's kind of factorable, is it? Let's go ahead and talk about the generalization of this problem. And I'm going to uh, leave you with some open questions. So in more general terms, this can be written as follows. x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus w to the fourth minus 4xyzw. That is the expression we want to factor. And I think a long, long time ago, I made a video on factoring this problem. If I can find the link, I'll include it. If I can't find the link, please find it for me and comment. Anyway, so how do we break this down? To break this down, we can basically do the same thing, pretty much. We can write it as follows. Let me quickly give you what it is. And then we're going to check the result from Wolfram Alpha. But think about this at this point. Like, do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve this equation, this quartic equation? All right. So I'm going to write it as follows. First, start with x to the fourth and then follow with negative 2x squared y squared and then continue with y to the fourth. It's pretty much the same thing that we did here, right? Cool. The first three terms are good because we don't have any w's in there. But then the w comes in and we can kind of follow up with this. We can write z to the fourth minus 2z squared w squared plus w to the fourth. That takes care of w to the fourth, z to the fourth, but then we bring in an extra negative 2z squared w squared, which will be taken care of in the next three terms. I can go ahead and follow up with 2x squared y squared because I need to make this cancel and then I will have to bring in my negative 4xyzw and finally plus 2z squared w squared will take care of this. Make sense? And this expression is actually, I shouldn't say factorable, but it can be written as a sum of perfect squares, right? And let's go ahead and write it. This is going to become x squared minus y squared squared. This is going to become z squared minus w squared squared. So far, so good, right? We got these two difference of square squared plus a 2 comes in and the chain or the pattern is kind of broken, but that's okay. We get xy minus z. And if you notice, this is going to be xy minus zw squared. Yes, this is the magic breakdown for this type of expression, which is very, very, very quartic, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha and we'll finish up with that. So, and Wolfram Alpha can find the solutions. Ta-da! And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.